Hey, ninth graders and eighth graders and seventh graders and whoever else is watching this. That one guy that's stalking me on YouTube. No, I'm just joking. As far as I know, no one is. If someone is, please let me know because you know, I don't like stalkers. Okay, this is a uh, warm up. I want you to do all these on your own. This is the stuff we had last two quizzes on. We haven't been great on those quizzes. I want you to practice these. All right? Pay attention to your problems. The most common mistake I saw in the last quiz was people forgetting to add something or subtract something or multiply or divide to all three sides. You have to be doing that on each problem, but you're adding, subtracting, multiplying all three sides, all parts of it on these compound inequalities. Um, yeah, very common mistake. Really, 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 rather frustrating. Class business, the usual stuff. Well, quizzes, let me know if you need to retake a quiz, and you should. Speaking of quizzes, it's parent-teacher conferences coming up. And a lot of you guys have grades that, uh, that your parents aren't very happy with. Um, especially if it's an honors class and honors students don't tend to have grades like C's or D's. Uh, not a lot of you have the grades that low, but those of you that do, I'd highly recommend you consider retaking quizzes. It will only get worse. It's not going to get better. Um, the math gets more and more complicated. The next thing we're doing with absolute value equations, um, it'll eventually move to absolute value inequalities which will require some of the same skills that maybe you were lacking a bit with inequalities now. Box tops, bringing box tops, box tops wars are almost over. Leaving, let me know if you're leaving early, that's important for me to be aware of. Dolphins, <laughs> that was on the, the quiz randomly, the random comment this time was beware of dolphins, and you should beware of dolphins. If during the course of a quiz you are seeing dolphins, I would watch out for them, because like, what are dolphins doing in their classroom? Um, I usually have a no talking policy during quizzes, but if you do need to talk in order to discuss how to best remove the dolphin from the classroom, I would I'd be okay with that. So you'd be like, hey, I'll grab the tail, you grab the front of it, someone else grab those fins, it's not hitting us in the face with them. Great. Um, yeah, dolphins. Great times. Let's look at absolute values. So absolute value, that's where you take a number, and there's lots of different ways it's defined. The one way I've heard it defined is the distance of that number from zero. So if we go out to a number line, how many spaces is seven from zero? It's 7. How many spaces is negative 3 from 0? It's 3 spaces away. Absolute value is never equal to something negative. This will always be something positive when you have an absolute value. Except on problem number negative... By the way, these are numbers weird. I apologize for that. Problem number negative 6 here. Absolute value, negative absolute value of 4. So what's the absolute value of 4? Do that first. It's 4. Then add in the negative afterwards. It's order of operations. You do the absolute value first, kind of like parentheses. That can even look a bit like parentheses, just not so bendy. So, absolute value of 4, do that first, that's 4, add in the negative later. Problem number negative 5 here. Uh, absolute value of negative 2, positive 2, then add in the negative afterwards. I'll do two more with you guys, how about negative 3 and negative 1. Oh, and I'll do 0 with you because it's sort of weird. So, negative 3, we've got 5 minus 12, that's negative 7. Absolute value of negative 7 is positive 7. And then put the negative in front of that. Negative 1, negative 2 times negative 3, that's positive 6. Absolute value of positive 6 is just 6. 0, if you said absolute value of negative x equals x, you are half right. Or rather, you're right half the time. The other half the time is equal to negative x. And this is like sort of an or situation. It's one of those or the other. Let's look at why that is. Let's say that we have x equals 5. If we do absolute value of negative x, that's negative 5, and that equals 5, which is what x equals, right? On the other hand, what if x equals negative 5? So we have absolute value of negative of negative 5. What's the negative of negative 5? Positive 5. What's the absolute value of positive 5? 5. Which is not what x equals. So, if x is positive, then it's equal to x. If x is negative, it's equal to negative x. Fun times, right? That's mostly nonsense, just a random problem I thought of, just to get us thinking a bit more deeply about absolute values, because we're going to need to think more deeply about them. Problem number one, absolute value of x equals 5. See if you can think what x equals. Pause it until you've got the answer. You should have said x equals 5. Now, pause it until you think of the other answer. Oh, I bet you didn't think of that. Two answers to one problem. Whoa, mind blown. Crazy, right? Um, pause the video, see if you can figure out the other answer to that. Hopefully you came up with that, the other answer, negative 5.
x to be equal to 5, positive 5 or negative 5, because either one of those has an absolute value of 5. Let's try another one. Here, we've got 2y equals, absolute value of 2y equals 4. Try that out. Okay, hopefully you said y equals either 2 or negative 2, because either one of those, multiply it by 2, take the absolute value, equals 4. 2 times 2 is 4, so that's good. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, absolute value of that, positive 4. 3 here, absolute value of x divided by 4 equals 5. Try that out. Hopefully you came up with x equals 20 or negative 20. Negative 20 divided by 4, that's negative 5, absolute value of negative 5, positive 5. And 20, same thing, just put the negatives. Pretty nice. Most absolute value equations will have two solutions that you'll get. Um, I recommend you check your solutions to make sure that they actually work properly. If they don't, then uh, it's probably not a solution, is it? Um, yeah, it may be that some of the solutions you should have had. Um, or it could be that there's no solution. We'll look at some of those later. y minus 3 equals 4. So by now, hopefully, you've got this kind of figured out a little bit. y equals 7. And most people are saying negative 7 for the second answer. Let's look at this. If we put in a negative 7, so first 7. 7 minus 3 is 4. Absolute value of 4 is 4. Negative 7. Negative 7 minus 3, negative 10. Absolute value of negative 10 is not 4. That negative 7 is incorrect. So, let's find an answer that is correct. This answer here, the 7, that makes a positive for the stuff here. So if we look for y minus 3 equals 4, so add 3 to both sides, y equals 7. We can also have a negative 4 in the parentheses here. So we should find out what makes it a negative 4 for y minus 3. So add 3 to each side. y equals negative 1. Negative 1 minus 3, negative 4. Absolute value of negative 4 is 4. Any absolute value equation, you're going to get a positive equation. It's going to split into two equations, positive and negative where you solve for the absolute value in here is a positive thing, or it's a negative thing before it gets absolute valued. Absolutely valued. Um, you'll have the two equations. That's how it works. That's what happens with absolute value. It's nice. So let's look at this in an actual problem, in a more complicated problem. Absolute value of 2a plus 5 equals 7. So we'll have two equations. One of them, just drop the absolute value bars, and you're there. 2a plus 5 equals 7. The other one, add a negative to the right side here. For now, we're going to go with the right side. We'll look at later where we could add a negative to either side. For now, let's go with the right side. So 2a plus 5 equals 7. 2a plus 5 equals negative 7. Subtract 5 from each side. Subtract 5 from each side. And let me just show you this because it's one that you might notice. Sometimes you'll have the exact same steps you're taking in each equation. I recommend against trying to solve your equation as an assembly line. We go down subtracting 5 each time. And then we'll go down uh, dividing by... See, that's not negative 2. I, oh my gosh, I make mistakes when I do that method. That's why I recommend against it. Don't do it that way. Divide by 2 on each side, divide by 2, a equals 1. If you're splitting your focus between the different equations, if instead of, fo if instead of focusing on the equation, you're focusing on what you're doing, or what you're focusing on your operation, that we're dividing, now we're going to multiply, now we're going to add, now we're going to subtract, and you're doing that on multiple equations, it's so easy to get parts of them confused. All today, I wanted to be doing that to rush through. I planned a little bit more than I'd expected, and so it, there wasn't quite enough time to get through it all. Uh, I found that I kept on making mistakes, just constantly. Uh, and especially, I would, because one of them was negative, I'd make the other one negative. Or if one of them was positive, I'd make the other one positive. It was bad. And it's mostly because I was trying to solve it too quickly and I made mistakes. Don't let yourself get careless like that, okay? I'm showing you this, that one method and saying against it because. Most people discover it, some, a lot of people discover it on their own anyways at some point. It's just not a good method to use, all right? So a equals 1, a equals negative 6. Let's try those two out. So 1, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 plus 5 is 7, absolute value of 7 is 7. Negative 6, 2 times negative 6 is negative 12, negative 12 plus 5 is negative 7. Negative 7 absolute value is positive 7. That works, yay. Always check both of your answers. Get in the habit of absolute value equations. It could be that both of them work. It could be that both of them don't work. It could be that one of them works, but the other one doesn't. Um, try numbers 6 and 7 on your own. I want to go over number 8 with you guys. There's something important to learn here. 
So try this on your own, and number eight as well, and then we'll go over them, all right? Well, number eight anyways. So we have two equations, d divided by five plus six equals negative eight. Just drop the absolute value bars, there we are. And d divided by five plus six equals the negative of negative eight, what would that be? Positive eight. Subtract six from each side. So d divided by five equals negative 14. Multiply by five. D equals negative 70. And over here, D divided by 5 plus 6 equals 8. Subtract 6. D divided by 5 equals 2. Multiply by 5. And D equals 10. Let's try those answers out. So negative 70. Negative 70 divided by 5, that's negative 14. Negative 14 plus 6 is negative 8. And the absolute value of negative 8 is not negative 8. It's positive 8. No good. D does not equal negative 70. D equals 10. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 2 plus 6 is 8. Absolute value of 8 is 8, not negative. It doesn't equal either of those. This problem has no solutions. We solve for both. Here's a trick with no solutions. If it ends up being no solutions corrected like this, you should get that at the end, you have two things that are opposites. That on one side you have a negative, the other one positive. Or one side positive, the other negative. This is no solution. Here's another tip on this. Look at that original equation. Absolute value of some stuff equals negative 8. Does absolute value ever equal negative? No. So if you ever see absolute value equals negative, then you can know there's no solution. I expect to see some sort of work explaining why there's no solution. So that could be that you do the equations, you find the solutions, and you find that neither of them actually, neither of them actually is a solution. The other way you could do that is in words. You could explain, uh, no absolute values are equal to a negative, so there are no solutions to this. That works too. You'd have to use like some sort of words that I feel fully explain it. I would recommend, uh, that might want to be a complete sentence, if I look at it and I don't feel like you fully explained it, you'll lose points on that, because that's not good enough to just say no solution. I was just saying the exact same thing to my 7th graders and 8th graders, or whatever the math class is that I teach. Um, I was explaining to them, I said, uh, no solution is a bit of a cop-out sometimes. It sounds like a cop-out. Imagine if I'm, uh, imagine if Mr. Campbell asks me with stage crew to make some sort of, like, sound setup for an assembly. He says, we need to have the sound work this way. Imagine that I tell him, yeah, there's no way to do that. It's not possible. It doesn't work. How does that sound? That could very easily sound like I'm being lazy, like I just don't want to do that. Instead, maybe I could explain why I say there's no solution. You know, the problem with that is our speaker systems, it's two separate systems, and while well, yes, it is possible to play the two separate systems separately, it's not really very easy to make it so that you get the same signal going to both of them with different signals doing a different thing. Um, so, if we could find a different way to do that rather than that, that would be the better way, the better way to solve this problem. Um, yeah. You should never be saying no solution can't be done until you have a good reason for that. So you can explain why. Until you have, like, whether that's the math or the explanation, the diagram, the chart, whatever. You have something that explains this is why there's no solution. Um, yeah. So, that's that. Let's look at one more thing. Problem number nine. This one is crucial. Um, yeah. So this is where we start to dig into a bit trickier absolute value equations. Absolute value of 4x plus 15 equals x. So, we're going to have two equations, 4x plus 15 equals x, and 4x plus 15 equals negative x. Just because we had that earlier one where the absolute value of x, where was it, where it was equal to x or negative x does not mean that's always going to be true that we have two different answers like that. We need to actually go through and solve it. That one wasn't an equation, that's why we couldn't solve it at all. When we have an equation, we can, because we make it into the two separate equations. So let's solve each of these. 4x plus 15 equals x. Let's subtract 4x from each side. So 15 equals negative 3x. Divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3. x equals negative 5. Here, subtract 4x from each side. 
So that's 15 equals negative 5x. Divide by negative 5, divide by negative 5. x equals negative 5, and this one would be negative 3. By the way, you can always list your answers off just as negative 5 comma negative 3. Let's try this both out. So negative 5. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. Negative 20 plus 15 is negative 5. Good. Absent that, negative 5 is positive 5, which is not equal to the negative 5 here. Oh, look at that. We have a negative there. If we put a negative 5, then the absolute value equals a negative. No good. Some of that negative 3 there. No good. Both of these, not true. And that's where things can get more tricky is when we have something on the other side of the equation that includes an x somewhere. Makes things a lot more complicated. Look forward to more of that. It's going to be great. Uh, with the set of notes, there's also a homework assignment that went with it. Um, come to me to get that if you're watching this and did not actually get the homework assignment. Or if you're watching this and you left your homework assignment in class because you didn't think to take it home or bring it with you to your locker or whatever. You have to get your homework done, all right? So that's that. Uh, I will talk to you later. Have a good rest of your day. Enjoy YouTube or whatever. Bye.